We Happy Friday, y'all. Um, three things to do today. I got to alter some of the listings to make life a little bit easier. Slept on it and just came out with some better ideas. Um, I'm going to update my inventory system and get that fully functioning uh, because I'm in a good spot right now between not having any stock and having lots of material on hand. So I can have that running. That'll help me with ordering um, parts in the future. And lastly, I'm just going to cut up a bunch of stock um, so I'm ready for the pre-sale so I can start machining. One eternity later. All right, listings are set up much better um, without going too granular on it. Um, I've just changed the way that the customers um, see the site. So it's just a little more simple. Things are better explained and I think the options are easier. Uh, and then when the orders get printed off, I print all these off because uh, every order is custom. So everything is a little bit different. Um, I broke it all up into SKUs so I can better organize that. So I can, you know, kind of batch um, work things a little bit easier um, and I also set it up so that a lot of the text fields here are bigger and easier for me to see and just like spaced apart further um, because like I reference these five ten times per pre-sale um, for each customer and if it takes me an extra one or two seconds to try to find what I'm looking for it's a lot of just wasted time uh, so yeah optimize that I think that'll help out a lot a few hours now to set, the, set that up um, but it's gonna be a win all around so whew, that's nice to get done let's go into the inventory system then we can start chopping up metal so I use Airtable um, in the past just for expense tracking, but now I'm using it kind of as a full-fledged inventory system. Um, all this data isn't correct right now, so I can show you some of it, um, but all the rest of this is fairly sensitive, so I can't show you a ton of it. However, um, setting up a BOM inventory system isn't trivial. This video, however, um, how to adjust your inventory when you sell a bundled product, um, I'll link it in the uh, comments below, is amazing. This is how I set up probably 75% of this system, and um, the rest of it is just simple expense tracking, which you can find uh, on the Airtable basis, like a template. Um, but yeah, this video really shows you how to set it up properly. Um, so yeah, if you're into uh, if you're into uh, tracking stuff um, and you're frustrated with what's available because I hate like QuickBooks, I hate all those other programs are just the most annoying to use. Um, so. Airtable is a learning curve, um, but I can set it up exactly how I want, and there's so much automation I can do with this. It can send me emails when orders are low that, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this. So that's what I use. So this is a fun trick. Um, if I'm designing something for the real world, so in this case, it's a little, the pen storage boxes that I use, I want to print a little shipping tray or a little storage tray that'll go inside. I take an image of it, um, bring it into Fusion, and then scale it to size, and then sketch right on it. Um, that way I can see whatever features I have to, you know, account for. Um, this is a little tray that's going to hold all the pen parts and just keep them from rattling into each other while they're sitting in the shipping trays or the storage trays. Keep calling them shipping trays. Um, on the satin finishes, if they bump each other, the titanium to titanium, titanium, two titanium parts, uh, they can leave little marks and I end up having to refinish. So this keeps everything nice and secure. And it also gives me a really easy visual check to make sure all parts are there, um, which is just a benefit to efficiencies. Here's all the pen triangle uh, shipping box spacers. Um, I printed them. I was going to laser cut them, but printing uh, lets me get fancy. So they're sitting in the UV curing station, and I'm just curing a whole whack at once um, because I was doing some uh, destructive testing, and I just I had a whole gang of them. Here I was uh, messing with different support structures, and uh, just peeling them off is it's a lovely sound. I'll stop talking so we can listen. It's like peeling off Velcro. Basically, I was just uh, messing with different support structures to see uh, what I could get away with and still have part reliability and still have the parts come out the way I want them to. Uh, so some of them were a little light, um, and then by the time I got to the end here, um, I was really happy with it. Um, the parts were coming out perfectly. I was getting zero failures, and I printed like, I don't know, 50 or 60 of these things, and uh, they all came out perfect. So um, that's the way I'm going to stick with it now. Um, I basically have that setting uh, in the slicer, so when I put parts in there, um, I know if I'm generating something like this, uh, what I can get away with. One of the main reasons I bought this printer is honestly just to do little parts like this. Here I'm going to do a little destructive testing. So the top is just some generic, uh, just your standard basic resin, and the bottom is an ABS resin. So I'm going to flex it to failure. And this one fractures. It fractures kind of like PLA. Um, the edges on these are mesh, essentially, so they're going to break a little bit easier. Um, the bottom one there is an ABS resin, so it has a little bit more flex to it. Um, and I'm going to test it in a similar way. I mean, it's not scientific. I'm just testing with my fingers more to see anything. And this one broke kind of similar, but the bend test... Uh, when I did, or bend test, the next little thing I did by bending the parts um, has a lot more flex to it. So this is a resin I'm probably going to stick with. I honestly don't really need these parts to be structural, um, but just having a little bit more flex would make life a little, be, a little bit easier. And they slip onto the pen boxes um, a little bit nicer, so I'll stick with it. And it's not really all that expensive, so kind of a good solution. Here's how I pack up all the orders. Um, 
basically just write a note to the customer. I reprinted or redesigned that label um, so that I had a little part or a little space where I could write notes to the customer. Fold everything up and the uh, little pen trays uh, are working amazing. They're so nice to put in. I don't have to glue them into place. Um, my fingers are getting smart with the uh, muscle memory of how to bend everything. A little triangle spacer goes on the pen box. And then I have to make a little support so I can hold these triangle pen boxes at the right angle so I can write on them. I write basically the serial number, the date, and then just uh, sign it so I know I've checked the pen over. Pop that into the uh, little shipping carrier, and that one's good to go. Um, when the lid comes down, it's going to pinch that into that little triangle groove, uh, and everything stays nice and solid. Uh, the male people can shake the bejesus out of it, and uh, everything stays in one place. And once again, that brings us to the end of another lovely video. By Monday, we'll know how the presale went, and I'll have information about that. Uh, but other than that, have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Take care.